Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of my motorsport series. Today I'm joined by two special guests who will be working together all year as teammates in the brand new groundbreaking electric off-road racing series Extreme E. I'm talking about Katie Munnings and Timmy Hansen, who will be racing for the Andretti United team in 2021. I caught up with them both just before the first Extreme E race of the season in Saudi Arabia, where they came away with an awesome second place finish. We chatted about Extreme E, their past experiences with racing, and the best way to make a pizza. I hope you enjoy our conversation. So hi, welcome to another episode of Motorsport Spotlight. Today I'm joined by not one but two or both, of Andretti United's Extreme E drivers for the 2021 season. We've got Katie Munnings and Timmy Hansen here. Welcome to the show, guys. So how are you both today, and where in the world are you? Where, uh, where are we now? Yeah. Are you I think we're in Saudi Arabia. In Jeddah. Uh, and actually, we're in quarantine, uh, waiting, waiting to go on the Santa Elena boat uh, later during the week before, before the actual race begins next weekend. How much are you both looking forward to it? Now that you're finally there. We try and have conversations about different things and it always just comes back to the race and <laughs> everything, all the small details about it. And yeah, we, as Timmy said, we get to go and uh, do some conservation work with the turtles and the, the legacy program before the race, which is really exciting to experience mm. that too. Yeah, I really like the aspect of the extreme East stuff that you get to have these these little projects going on there and just it really makes you feel like you're, you're going there to have a lot of fun with it at the same time, but you get to do something good and I mean, you get played by the turtles. Why not? Yeah. yeah, it's really on a personal level that it's nice to be able to help and do something good mm. for the world uh, mm. and also see some other places and, you know, experience everything that's going on with envi environmental changes. And I think, I think experiencing it firsthand will give a whole other feeling to what's happening with the world and what we have to do. Especially as the, all of these places for extreme have been chosen specifically for that kind of reason that they're vulnerable. So it kind of brings it home and hopefully everyone watching then it, it delivers the message. So uh, we're going to start off with a question for you, Katie. So what made you want to go rallying in the first place? Oh, good question. Um, I think actually it was, I, um, I went to, well, I was competing in grass auto testing um, from when I was about 14 to 17. And then I went to a test with Peugeot. I went and spectated on a rally and there was a kind of a gap for females in the, in the sport. And Peugeot Sport were running um, an official test uh, for some drivers to test out for the following year in the European Championship. And there were some big names. I mean, Craig Breen was there, Chris Ingram was there. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of Pepe Lopez, a lot of the drivers that went on to ERC um, and now WRC too. Um, and I'd never sat in a rally car before. And I was getting straight in a Peugeot 208 R2. Um, but it was cool because... Perjo Sport were there with their engineers and you know, they were saying that they were, there was a gap for a female um, and they were quite excited that I also hadn't had bad experiences if, if from the sense of bad habits, um, picking them up at grassroots. So I was really keen to learn from them, which worked quite well. Um, and I think I, I felt like I was going so fast um, on my first runs because it was, it was off the side of Mont Blanc. It was really steep um, and I felt like invincible. It was like a gravel track, single file. I thought I was really good. And then I got to like the end of, I'd done like a one lap up and one lap down. And this French guy that I was sat with, who was Charles Martin, um, he's French champion. He was like, okay, should we put it in rally mode now? <laughs> Just being in road mode. Um, and I think it was a bit of a wake up call to me because I'm a really competitive person. So to sit then to sit with him and see what he could do and think to myself, I really, I wish I could do that. You know, it's like superhuman skill. It's like, you know, if, if I'm playing a sport, I want to be as good as somebody else in the sport. I'm very competitive like that. So I think it was more of the challenge. I'd experienced it firsthand what it was really like to go fast in one of those cars. And I was like, you know, I was just wanting to see if I could push myself to do that too. I suppose if you felt that good, like the first time before it was even in rally mode, how did that feel then when you actually did put it in there? Like be just on a whole other level. Yeah, exactly. And I remember I was kind of massively intimidated by the whole experience. And my dad was at the side saying, don't crash it, don't crash it. Because <laughs> they kind of just invited me for a few laps. But I ended up spending like nearly an hour in the car, which was awesome for just, oh. you know, like a, an initial test day for a couple of um, and got chatting to the team. And then, uh, yeah, we decided to go straight into the European Championship. Um, just the, 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 the standard was so high. It was like, you know, the, the proving ground for the young guys and girls that are going on to do, you know, junior WRC and WRC. So 
it was cool to associate myself with that and to learn from those people. It was really fast track. I mean, I was a complete novice when I went in and it was like, you know, I was learning very quickly on the job, <clears throat> sometimes by accidents too. So it was, um, yeah, mentally it was a tough challenge, but I'm really glad that I did because, yeah, it, it led me to some amazing places and um, to quite a lot of experience in different surfaces. I mean, but it's a bit of a case of exactly the right place at the right time. And as you say, it's just like starting out with it. You've got nothing really to lose from it and everything to gain. So you might as well just go for it and have as much fun and fun with it as you can then. And then it sounds like you did just exactly that and it's worked out quite well for you by the look of things. Exactly, yeah. That's exactly right. So, Timmy, you started out in driving a Formula BMW, uh, Formula Renault 2 Alps and the Euro Cup, if I'm remembering correctly. What made you want to change then from the single seaters to the race to the rallying? Well, uh, it was really the first time that I had the chance to test the Rallycross Supercar uh, in our own team. Uh, one of our drivers had been ill and I, I had the chance then to do the race. So I remember us going to the local circuit just 10 minutes from the workshop uh, and I jumped in that car and really what caught me was, was the launch. Uh, the, it's like an explosion and like I, I came out with a massive smile and I just, I think I fell in love with with Rallycross uh, and we went on to do the race and it went well. I came fifth in my first ever Rallycross race in the European Championship. Uh, I had a fight with Tanner Faust like right there and and most of all I think I just I just enjoyed it like, so much. Uh, for me uh, like circuit racing was my, like my big mission and what I wanted to do but during the years I think I lost a bit of the of the fun in it and then coming back to Rallycross it's just yeah uh, I just I just love being there again and uh, I was so much happier like driving driving a car like that and you know the, the rest is history I've, I've been there ever since so. The kind of joint question for both of you then off the back of that is the speed and kind of the more freedom you have with that the reason that you both love rallying so much. Yeah, definitely. It's the adrenaline. I think it's like the unknown, the changing conditions all the time. Um, there's a lot of intuition and um, like spontaneity, I think is the word, <laughs> in your driving, um, which is exciting. It's not kind of the same track um, twice over. So it's, um, yeah, sliding is way more fun, isn't it? We all know that. <laughs> and, and the adrenaline. I mean, like the adrenaline that you get on a good run, mm. like and when you've done something better than before or been in a good battle like it nothing beats that there is nothing in the world that beats you know that the level of excitement that you have behind the wheel like you can go the craziest the roller coasters on a on a area like that <laughs> and then you know, do them all at the same time and it's not going to come close that's true so timmy you spent five years in rallycross before then winning the championship in 2019 how did it feel to finally win that title and just be on the top of the world yeah, I mean, it still feels crazy, like uh, like you said that. You still got that I, feeling I, now. I, yeah, uh, I still I still do really. I think being world champion is something that I I dreamed of since since rallycross became a world championship, and I came close in 2015, running came coming second. Uh, but uh, yeah, then then 2019 was was really my year. Everything came together. Uh, we had a fantastic season. Uh, we had gone from being a factory team back to being a private team and running it with my family, my brothers, my teammates, and uh, having all of that success. Uh, also, you know, that we, we put everything into that year and into coming back after after the Peugeot left as a factory team. And we've made it to the start line, first of all. And then once we were there, we were like, wow. And it actually started well. We were first and second in the first qualifying and the year went, went really well, of course. Uh, Andreas Backrudy was also very fast and, and a very good competitor. So like, both of us delivered throughout the year, uh, Kevin as well. And we, all three of us could win when we got to the last race. But uh, I fell, it fell my way in the end. And uh, be one of you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, yeah, it's almost surreal, you know, uh, when we had the trophy back home and coming to the big prize giving uh, for, to get my world championship trophy. It was, yeah, it's definitely the highlight of my career. And, I hope I'll do it again. <laughs> it, was, it was very much a dream story for that year with how it started and then how you, how you finish it off with all three of you then being the ones to, to fight for it. So the, the team is guaranteed a win either which way there, more or less, and then even better for you that it's, it's, it's for you after all that time spent in, in the rallycross. So. 
And I think the, the big winner really that year was, was Rallycross as a sport because it's come through a difficult time uh, when, uh, when, but the sport survived. And then 2019 showed exactly how, how mm. exciting Rallycross should be and always has been. Uh, but, you know, coming down to the last race, uh, I think Rallycross as a sport was probably the biggest winner of everything. Something, something in it for everyone there, I'd say, new and old fans alike. So then, Katie, how did, if we're going to move on to an extreme A now, how did the opportunity to take part in, in this new racing series come about for you? Um, I'd heard about Extreme A because I'd seen drivers signing up for the drive program and I kind of wondered what it was, but didn't really pay that much attention to it because I'd never considered electric racing. Um, mm. And then I kept getting um, kind of emails from the Extreme A team wondering, wanting to have a chat. Um, and at first, I think I said no because I was, um, you know, focused on rally and I was going mm. to compete in the Junior World Championship and I assumed the calendar would clash or something like that. And I didn't really think that you could do both. Um, but then I'm really glad that I did. And after my first initial call with them, I just had this big gut feeling that I should be involved with it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it took me a while to enter the driver's program. Because um, first of all, you know, with a new championship, you never know kind of what's involved with it. Um, if it's going to be a success, you know, you see lots of electric championships kind of go, go and then finish very quickly. So it was kind of quite a big decision. And then, I'm, you know, I entered into the driver's program um, and I was really excited by that point. I'd had loads of calls, fully understood the concept of it. But I think that was before it was even mentioned that there'll be a male and a female in the team. So mm. it wasn't, you know, there wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't that many girls in the drivers program, I don't think. And um, it was one of those things where I just kind of thought it'd be one driver. Um, and, I, you know, no commitment. You, you enter into the drivers program, but it doesn't really mean mm. much other than teams have the option, you know, to choose you. And uh, you're kind of a bit more in the focus for pickings. Um, and then about two weeks later, I think Roger phoned me, um, Roger Griffiths, so the team principal from Formula E. Um, it was a Friday night. He was obviously in LA and I was in um, the UK in lockdown having a summer barbecue. Um, yeah, and he just kind of explained um, the whole process, what they were thinking, um, what the team was like, you know, like as a kind of family. And uh, it felt it felt like a really nice dynamic. And um, yeah, a few months later, um, I signed with them and I think that was probably similar time that Timmy was having conversations because I didn't know Timmy was going to be my male teammate until I'd signed the contract. I think they wanted to keep it that way um, for both Just of us. But I was so happy. Yeah, so, so happy when I found out it was him. Um, yeah, he's literally so much fun to be with, but also like an amazing, amazing team. <laughs> he's like slipping me five pound notes under the table. <laughs> no, he's an, honestly an amazing teacher. I've learned more than him from him in the last kind of two months than I have in you know, four years in motorsport. So it's really awesome to have that energy around. And um, yeah, to both want to be fast for each other, I think is the biggest thing. It's not an individual sport where you give another driver some tuition and, you know, set them off and say good luck. It's a lot more involved than that because we need to do it for each other. Yeah, I mean, it's, it was it similar for you then to me for that and how it was attracting and how extremely attracted you to it or did you just kind of, or was it kind of a last minute thing for you? No, the, the first contact I had with Extreme was uh, the very first test they did on full power. Uh, they they called both me and my brother Kevin to come down and test the car. And uh, that was in the middle of the season in 2019. Uh, and then, you know, it was fun. It was a good car. I enjoyed it. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, I, I didn't hear much more until, yeah, Roger, Roger called me and and uh, they needed a driver and and i was excited to be part of the championship and uh yeah, it was quite it's quite an easy choice uh i mean especially now the calendars don't clash with with radicross so it's possible to do both. uh so so yeah it was it was really an easy choice and i was very motivated to, to come here and uh, being in it now it's a bigger challenge probably than i expected um the tracks being way more different than, than I could think and uh, yeah it's uh, it's a lot of new things electric racing and and also driving with Katie you know sharing a car with someone else uh, but uh, yeah it's turned out great we we spent a lot of time together lately and uh, I think we're gonna be we're gonna be a good team uh, I'm, fingers crossed yeah, have, yeah exactly <laughs> I have a good, good faith in Katie and I hope that uh, that you know I can also do my job well and if, if both both perform as we can. I'm sure that we can be in there for the shot to, to win the race. Oh, hopefully, yeah. It'd be great to, great to just to start the season on a, on a high like that, especially with the big gaps in between. It'd just be, you can ride on that until the next round then. So then, question for both of you, and you can't choose each other. Um, who are you most looking forward to competing against? 
on the rest of the grid. And we couldn't pick each other because we're not going to race against yes. each other anymore. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. I'm just covering Unless myself up just in case. <laughs> Um, I think for me, uh, I'm I'm excited. All of the girls have never raced them before, um, but the guys I know some of them quite well from rallycross. Um, but yeah, it's really to see what discipline, what skill from what discipline will pay off the most. Like uh, there are plenty of rally drivers, rallycross drivers, and Dakar, but also you know even Jensen from from Formula One uh, and from circuit racing backgrounds. Uh, you know, it's such a variety, uh, wide like. Of, of skills and then coming out and seeing what skills you need to go fast here I and mean, that, that's that's exciting so how, how different is the driving in the electric off-road vehicle to what you're used to in comparison because you're saying about which discipline might be the best one to have going into this is the is rallying really helping you with it or is there still a lot of challenges in how in how that's working <laughs> I think, you know, generally how to drive a race car, that's, that's always the same, you know, we've got a steering wheel and actually one less pedal, so there's no clutch, but throttle and a brake um, and, and four wheels on the car, you know, that, that never changes. Uh, but, you make it sound so simple. Yeah. <laughs> driving, no, yeah, no. <laughs> that's my plan, that it shouldn't change. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are loads of specific things, uh, especially how how good the electric engine behaves, you know, there's always exactly the power you want and you need. It's always available instantly. Uh, mm. There's no turbo lab, no, no engine that needs to build up its torque. Uh, so actually because the engine is working that good, we end up talking a lot less about the actual engine and the power and much more about how the engine is affecting the chassis and, uh, and how it's affecting the balance that we have and the feeling. So rather than speaking about like, oh, the power was good, the drivability was good, the gear shifts and stuff like that that I'm used to, or any driver is used to, then now an electric engine always is always as good as an engine can be. You know, mm. the only thing we can say is more power, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I'm sure it, they're working on it. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of effect on the, on the balance of the car. So that's, that's the biggest difference, I think. Mm. Do, do you agree with that then, Katie, or? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had quite a funny time when we were in Spain for the first time because it was kind of the first time, well, for me, I know Timmy had driven it before, but for me, especially the first time I'd ever driven an electric car, you know, race car, or actually probably a normal car as well, to be honest with you. Um, and I remember like, it, you know, it's just getting used to the different sensations because obviously when you're driving a normal rally car and you lock the wheels, one of the first feelings you have is the knocking noise and just not having that and having you know to feel it through the seat back to it and come in and actually have to ask the engineers am i locking the wheels i'm not really sure because it's just a different feeling and you have to kind of build up a new uh, dictionary of um how to talk about it and uh, you know from a driving side how it feels and to kind of get a baseline level and i think got that's got to rewire the instincts a little bit there yeah, it is. And I think it's really nice to have a team that have been involved with Formula E. So, you know, obviously got the knowledge of the battery and, you mm. know, cooling the battery and the state of charge and all of these things that I haven't worked with before. Um, so it's nice to not be kind of starting from the beginning with that one and to be um, able to lean on that info as much as possible. You seem to be throwing yourself into the deep end quite a bit with some of this stuff, don't you? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it's a running theme here, isn't there? <laughs> I've, I've noticed it slightly. <laughs> Jump, jumping off that then, uh, Chase, do you see yourself competing in Dakar or the Bahar in some point in the future? Or <laughs> Me and Timmy have had a very off-road couple of months. We were in completely in the middle of the desert um, in the sand dunes and we had Francois Cazalet, who's the, obviously the Red Bull Junior Team off-road uh, co-driver with us. He'd just done Dakar. Um, and yeah, it was, it was amazing because he would, he would be like, okay, that's the cap going that direction. And there's no tracks. It's just, he, he has no idea what's over the other side of the sand dunes. And it was for us, it was really strange because every track we've ever driven has been, you know, a safety delegate's gone through and it's been like, okay, it's okay to go far from there. And with this, it's, you know, they change every night with the wind. So it was a really free experience. And I think we both found a completely new level of respect for drivers that go and just we throw themselves into that. It's hardcore. We were doing like 60K loops a day and thinking we were exhausted when we came back and they're doing like, you know, five times that. Um, so yeah, it kind of, it made us uh, realize that, um, yeah, there's a lot of work to do if we want to go and do an event like that. And definitely I think it's on the bucket list in the future. 
What, what about you, Timmy? Would you be interested in competing in other forms of motorsport, or is rallying now like the one for you? Uh, I think uh, I think like the, the Dakar or or a rally that that's something that I would like to do. Uh, the the off road side is really quite unknown for me, and and the way that you drive like, when you cross dunes and navigate like that's very different to circuit racing. Uh, and <laughs> Just a little bit. First day that, uh, what, is it two weeks ago now? Three weeks ago mm. when we were in Dubai practicing together, uh, as Katie said, and it's amazing. It's so cool uh, what they're doing and. Like imagining doing the the Dakar and and two weeks on the road like that and just tackling June after June and many difficulties like uh, yeah I'm, I would be quite excited to try something like that but uh, we'll see if the opportunity comes. So then jumping off that a little bit as well, what would be one of the most important lessons you've learned from rallying so far? Either one of you. Yeah, that's the most important. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Yeah. Don't lift off if you're in the moment. <laughs> Never give up. We were talking about that one last night at dinner. You know, if the car still, what Timmy was saying, one of the biggest things he's learned from his dad is if the car still goes in a straight line, then you keep going with it as well. You don't even need to go somewhere. You don't, stop. Stop as well. you don't stop until it stops. <laughs> uh, and then, Katie, you got to drive a specially prepared Venti Continental in the GP Ice race in Austria last year, I think it was. What was that like? It's obviously quite different from all the sand you've been playing with now. So, Yeah, do you know, it was, a, it was so much fun. I mean, it was like mapped at 550 right horsepower on ice, uh, this big kind of two tons. How the heck did you drive that? <laughs> I know. And do you know what? It was quite funny because when we, when we went, we were in the regulations, it kind of said you have to have tyres on the uh, road legal, you know, they're road going. And um, we were kind of sponsored by Pirelli. And so uh, they've got this tyre, which is kind of used up in the mountains and it has quite a small stud on it. Um, but when we arrived, all of the other cars um, that were kind of in our category had like the proper rally studs on narrow tyres. So obviously they had way more grip than we did. Um, but it was quite fun in a way because it just turned into like our car was the show car. So we were the ones that were like, Massive Scandinavian flicks and drifts, and uh, not necessarily in it for the racing side, but more for the, um, yeah. And you know, the, the, the purpose of the trip and the race was to show how dynamic the car is as a performance car, and not just a you know a, a road going kind of um, gentle car. Um, you know, we wanted to show what it can do um, in an off road kind of well on ice. Um, mm. And so, yeah, we tested it up in the um, kind of in the Finland area on the lakes um, a few months before the race, and then uh, yeah, it was really good fun and uh, amazing week and it was it was a cool race for, for itself it was um lots of different varieties of cars <laughs> yeah exactly it was awesome so katie can you tell me a bit more about the dare to be different campaign and your involvement with that yeah so um dare to be different was founded by susie wolf um obviously trying to encourage girls in um to motorsport at the right age to give them a fair shot at really getting to the top and um, being on level with the boys not just in the racing side but the mechanics engineers presenters um every aspect of the sport so i was involved with that when i started rallying um susie wolf was uh, you know she used to be a fantastic mentor and um she'd phone me up and see how my rallying is going and it was awesome um to lean from her advice and experience um and then recently it's merged with girls on track so it's no longer dare to be different it's called fia girls on track um so it's got a big list of ambassadors and it's a lot more kind of hands-on in terms of actually like scouting for female talent if you like um it's really cool um i haven't actually been to any events recently i think mostly because of covid they were so i think you've probably that. got a good excuse for that so yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting a bit more involved again in the future. And especially now with the Extreme E Championship and the gender equality, it's mm. very fitting. It was, it was a good aspect of the, of the Extreme E that I really enjoyed that. It was just, it was a mandatory thing from the get-go. It's like, there's no question of ability there. It's just, yeah, of course. Why, why wouldn't it be like this? I, I love that. Yeah, it's, it's powerful that it's, it's one team and one result. It's not just a female category that we've seen in other sports where it's kind of pushed mm. aside a bit and not taken seriously. You know, all the drivers are here because they have to perform at the end of the day. So, you know, mm. we've, we've all got the same access to engineers and testing and, um, yeah, it's the same programme. Did working on Dare to be Different then make you want to do the CBB show or was that a different <laughs> thing entirely? No, that was random. 
um, I was on BBC Breakfast in the UK um, following, I think, when I won the European Ladies Championship. Um, and then one of the producers for Kids TV was just watching it and uh, he phoned me up um, like a week later and said, I've had this idea for a series. Do you want to film a pilot episode? So I went along and he said, normally it takes about two years to get commissioned for Kids TV. So, you know, don't stress about it. And then literally like two months later, they said, okay, we, we, we want to go film. And uh, it was literally right at the same time as when I was doing the European Championship. So it was every day that I was competing, I was filming. Um, we did some in the UK, some in France, some in Spain. Um, and they wanted to go to America too. So it was, it was quite hectic and I was exhausted. Um, and then I felt like if I carried it on, I would just be giving half to each career. And they're both, you know, careers that you should throw everything at, um, you know, competitive industries and um, amazing um, jobs to land if you like so I, so I as you say you're, if you want to do something you want to be the best at it so you don't want to be just yeah. dividing your time up unfairly then and, and I felt like I was turning up to the rallies not having done my full prep and I was remembering script lines instead of the onboard videos and things like that. So, not gonna help um, right now <laughs> No, and it was, a, it was a really tough decision, but, you know, and at the end of it, it was so successful that they commissioned another two years of it, which was obviously bigger and better, um, filming all over the world, but I just couldn't, I couldn't, I knew in my heart I couldn't commit to both at this stage in my career. I'd come in wanting to be a rally driver and a, 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 a real competitor with the guys, and I was leaning towards that, and it just, it felt right to me to continue that and not to give it up um, at the first hurdle. Moving on to a few more fun-ish kind of questions now. Um, Timmy, where would you love to race but you haven't yet had the opportunity to? Um, well, maybe maybe that's the Dakar then. Uh, that would be fun. Uh, but uh, I've raced in a lot of cool places. You know, I'm lucky since my racing days, I, I went on a lot of good uh, race tracks. And my favorite race track in the world is uh, in Salt Lake City, the Nitro Rally Cross Track. Uh, it's just Motorsport 2.0. Like, it's absolutely crazy. Uh, so, is that yeah. one with a big jump? Yeah. It's, uh, it's always going to be a other... jump, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But any other Nitro Rally Cross race. Uh, uh, it's, it's high on my list. <laughs> um, Katie, what do you like to do for fun outside of the rallying? Or is it just rally completely? Timmy's going to say cross-stitch here, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> I've got very calming. I was taking the mic out of me because when we were testing in Spain, I took it with me. I was stitching a, a 2021 sign, which I still haven't finished, but I was trying to aim for it to be done by New Year because um, that was in December. But didn't Sorry, quite you're only, three, you're only three months behind. <laughs> Yeah, it's fine. I've kind of given up with that. I'm on to colouring now. <laughs> no, I love just being outside. I love yoga, kind of spending time with my family and my dog. Pretty normal things, really. I feel like we were talking about this earlier when you travel a lot and when you're away doing exciting things. A bit of normality in life is kind of the best therapy that you need. Simple things. Exactly. Do you have a favourite band, Timmy? My favourite what? Band. Band. He does. We were ice driving in Sweden a couple of weeks ago, and we had to come back from the restaurant early to watch the Eurovision uh, competition for Sweden. The, Sweden. the Swedish Eurovision, and it, it's like the highlight in the country. Like you have to watch it, otherwise you're lost in all conversation for two weeks. So we had to watch it. <laughs> but, uh, I, think, I think I've just yeah. found the headline right. for the article now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. The Swedish Eurovision then. <laughs> 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 Katie, controversial question. Is a Jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit? Oh, I can't hear you. You've gone really quiet all of a sudden. What about, how about now? Yeah, for you. Controversial question. Is a Jaffa cake a cake or a biscuit? Oh, a Jaffa cake is a... Mm, it's a biscuit. It's not a cake, is it? I mean, I'm having a cake, I'm having a cake. I'm always Do you know what exactly about it. it. No idea. <laughs> this is why that was for you and that not for him. <laughs> <laughs> biscuit and not a cake. That's what Katie says. Okay. Uh, Timmy, what was the last thing that really made you laugh? Like stitches kind of laughter. Eurovision. <laughs> 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 oh, when I went into a snowbank when we were ice driving and Timmy got to take photos of me shoveling it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good uh, one. <laughs> all right. And do you have any hidden talents, Timmy? Uh, 
Uh, you, you're like, but I'm, I'm really good. It's a random thing, but I'm really good at catching things that fall. Like, <laughs> yeah, if I drop something, I always catch it. It's like, it's incredible. I never did you, did you notice? It's just good I, reactions, I, no? Yeah, but we, did you notice yesterday when I tipped over the glass and I catched it before all the water was out? No, I haven't noticed. This you is reaction. Yeah, that's my, gone, that is, is probably my biggest talent. Your reaction starts from rally for us. <laughs> Actually, I, I would disagree. He's amazing at making pizza. Like, he went, I went to his house for pizza night. He's got a really good pizza oven. He right. And he like, leaves it out for hours at a time. And it's, it's, it's like a massive nerd about it. Mm. I really. do like a good pizza. That sounds, that sounds epic. <laughs> Who, doesn't? Who doesn't like a good pizza? This is very true. I don't trust people who don't like pizza. Yeah. It's so easy. Make, like, yeah, I think making pizza is my first hobby. I have a wood-fired oven. Uh, I was going to say, you've got everything there now. You make it look easy. You're just doing dough on both hands now. So. Yeah, exactly. And then, but you know, when it's actually pizza, you can't really fail. Like, put mm. anything, any cheese onto any bread and it will taste good. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. So I can't fail. You know? And not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Well, on that note, it was great to chat to you both today. Thank you for being here. And I wish you both the best of luck with the upcoming Extreme E season. Thanks for coming on to the show, and I'll see you again soon. So there you have it. Another episode done already. But what a fun conversation it was, don't you agree? It's great fun chatting to Timmy and Katie. I want to thank them again for being today's guests. And thanks to Andretti United as well. I wish Katie, Timmy and the whole team the best of luck for the rest of the Extreme E season ahead. Join me again soon when I'll be talking to another famous person from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on Drive Tribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.albers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of their weekly podcast. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you again soon.